and flags are at half-staff, and condolences are pouring into the Belgian embassy right here in Washington, D.C. I went there earlier today to speak to uh, Belgium's ambassador to the U.S., Ambassador Johan Verbeke, was at Brussels' main airport just a day ago, preparing to return from Brussels to Washington. On that very Monday, which is one day before today, I was in the airport, the International Airport of Brussels, and paradoxically, I was very much impressed by the security measures that were taken. Visibly, a lot of not just security people, but including military people, were walking around equipped with weapons and all that kind of stuff, which gave a sense of, you know, security. And then the question arises, indeed, how come that notwithstanding those measures, still such a treacherous attack is possible? And the answer is? And the answer is that nobody and nowhere can you be immune against this kind of operations. We in Europe, we have uh, that closeness to uh, other parts of the world, including the Middle East. The Middle East, basically, these are our neighbors. North Africa, basically, is our neighbors. We have that exposure. We have that tradition of openness, Europe as a whole, but particularly Belgium is a very open society. It's an open economy. Uh, and whereas you could, and I for one do, continue to consider to be that an asset, that kind of open-mindedness and openness toward the outside world, it can also be a liability. You've been a diplomat for several years. Uh, you've had postings in the Middle East. You've been in Beirut, um, which when we think back in the 80s, a lot of bombings there, terrorist acts. Did you ever think you'd be standing before a reporter talking about it, perhaps a comparison between Brussels and Beirut, terrorism coming home to Belgium? At the time in the 80s when I was posted in Lebanon, we kind of uh, watched those developments with uh, a very uh, large sense of, of you know, uh, awareness and skepticism and, and feeling that this should never have happened to us. And then what you see that is that in a world that becomes more and more interconnected, globalized and so on, these kind of things are spread all over the place. You were quoted recently uh, in saying that there's an intensive program to deal with the radicalization problem uh, there at home. Um, how do you address this issue? Because it's something, obviously, that you've been talking about. It's something that the country's been looking at. Um, there still appears to be a, a, a big problem, obviously, today, an illustration of that. Well, the, the fact that the problem isn't solved yet should certainly not be an invitation to start being discouraged about your de-radicalization programs on the country. The only thing you can conclude of that is that you should continue with them and perhaps even enhance them. Now, on that point, I want to be quite clear. That is that the de-radicalization programs that we have in place are known to be quite good. But the phenomenon is such that even with those programs, you don't solve the problem, or at least not in the very short term. So we should pursue, and we will pursue, uh, going ahead with those programs. But in the meantime, we also have to address the very short-term threats that, uh, uh, that, that are there. Do you have genuine fear that, that we can see more attacks? As many of our European partners say, this is not just a Franco-Belgian problem. It is a problem for Europe. It's a problem for the world at large. So this is really becoming a kind of worldwide phenomenon which needs uh, to be addressed at the level of, at the global level. And that is why we think an initiative like the coalition against ISIL, of which, of course, Belgium is an active, is an active part, uh, should be pursued in order to also build on that kind of solidarity among nations to tackle the problem. Because the problem is not just that you kill people. The problem is that they want to change the model of our societies, the values for which we stand, such as liberty, freedom, democracy. And that we cannot accept.